What's going on YouTube? In my previous video, I showed you guys how to set up your first two pages on Touch Portal and setting up a basic button within Touch Portal. In this video, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the buttons and the button creation with actions and so on and so forth in Touch Portal. If you haven't watched my previous video, make sure you check that video out. The link is in the description below. That video will show you how to set up some of the basics within Touch Portal, and this video will dive deeper. If you're new to the channel and you're new to Touch Portal, I am doing a full set of beginner guides with Touch Portal that are really going to help you out with the creation process or your first time use with the application. If you're interested in more of these tutorials, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on the Touch Portal guides. That being said, let's jump right into this video. In my previous video, I showed you how to set up this first main page with these two buttons here on it. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some other cool buttons. We're gonna look at all the button actions that are available and we'll cover more of the basic ones in this video and we'll dive deeper into the more complicated actions in the future. So let's go ahead and open up this button here. In the button menu, you'll notice a lot of stuff is going on. You have actions on the left, you have on press, on event, and on hold tabs here in the middle, and you have your button settings on the right. The on press tab is going to be where you hold the majority of your actions on touch portal. Actions are everything that's listed on the left here. The on event tab is a bit different than the on press tab, where the on press tab is an action that happens when you press the button. The on event tab is an action that will happen based on an event that happens within an application on your computer. I know that sounded pretty complicated. If you scroll down in the actions on the left and we head over to our OBS section, you'll notice that there are a bunch of event statements here. These event statements are statements of event changes that happen within OBS. The event tab will host or hold all of these event statements. And within these event statements, you can create actions based on these events. The last tab here is the on hold tab. On the on hold tab, we can create actions from holding down a button on touch portal. So in theory, you can have three different actions or three different buttons per button. You can have an on press tab. When you press the button, something happens. You can have an on event action and an on hold action that are all completely separate built into one single button on touch portal. We're obviously not gonna dive that deep in into it, you can get creative and think of something yourself there if you would like. We're gonna cover all the actions or all the basic actions in this video, and then I'm gonna show you how to set up a basic pause and play button in Touch Portal. The pause and play button will be an on and off switch or a pause slash play visual change on the actual button. So when you press the pause or play button, it will change over from play over to pause. First, let's go ahead and cover all the actions that are available on the left here. In the run and open section, you have a lot of actions that are built into open folders, run applications, you know, toggle a shortcut, so on and so forth. A lot of more basic functions are built into this section. The navigation section is to navigate from one page on Touch Portal to another page or even open a URL on your PC. The input section allows us to write a line of text at a touch of a button. It also has a virtual key press, which is a essentially just a, a key bind built into a button. So for instance, if we wanted a control T key bind in this button, it would be uh, that's how we would create that, that that function. You'll notice that in the virtual key press, you have a duration of the button press. It's how long uh, that button is actually going to be pressed as well built into that. And then you have a low level key press, which is essentially the same exact thing as a virtual key press, except for it is low level function. Next, you have a press and hold key, which is just like the other key presses, except for it presses and holds down on that key until you press the button again. And then last but not least, you have a mouse click action. In the utility section, we have the options to lock our computer, shut down the computer, copy an image to a clipboard, or copy a file to our clipboard. 
Next up is our logic section. We're gonna dive deep into the logic statements in a video. It deserves an entire video of its own, but the logic statements is how you create very, very complex buttons within Touch Portal where you have one button that can do multiple things at once um, or do multiple things based on other buttons. So the logic section is extremely valuable. We'll dive more into that in a future video. The next section is the file IO section. This, this is, gives us a deeper control into the files on our computer. So you can check files, uh, delete files, so on and so forth, or even have an event statement when file changes. So this, this helps you create automated actions in Touch Portal. Um, moving on to the next one, we have the, HT, we have the HTTP, which has HTTP gets, posts, and puts. If you don't know what those are, then it probably won't help me explaining that. HTT gets and posts and puts are mainly used for uh, getting specific bits of information from an HTTP, HTTP address. The next section is visual changes within Touch Portal. So things like changing the actual button visuals, which we're gonna talk about here in a bit, change visuals based on a plugin state or even adding a comment. The next section is actually media functions. This actually controls all the media that's on your computer. So if you have an application open to play music, this section will control that music application. The only issue with this section is if you have have multiple applications open, it's going to prioritize it based on Windows prioritization, which I have absolutely no idea what how that works. Essentially, what I'm saying is if you're watching Hulu and you're playing music at the same time, if you hit the pause or play button that you create for the media functions, it might pause the music versus the uh, Hulu or vice versa. That's why plugins developed for specific music applications are very useful. If you scroll down some more, we have the OBS section. The OBS section is going to give us full control of OBS to do all kinds of cool stuff like switching scenes, changing scene collections, changing source visibility, turning up volume, turning down volume, muting volume sources, so on and so forth. The OBS section is insanely valuable for you streamers out there. We're going to cover this section more in depth in a future video. You also have XSplit and Streamlabs OBS. If you're using those, I suggest just getting rid of them and going back to OBS Studio. Next up, you have the Twitter section. In the Twitter section, you have an action to actually send a tweet and you have an action to change the profile name. Then we have the Twitch section, which is also very cool. You can do things like play an ad, create a clip on your stream, set the stream category, or switch to followers slash subscribe only mode. It also allows you to create event statements like when someone subscribes to the channel or redeems channel channel points within your channel, which I've talked a lot about in the past. You should definitely go check out this video I did for creating channel point redemptions within Touch Portal. And last but not least on the defaulted actions on Touch Portal, you have the Philips Hue. This allows you to control Philips Hue lights. If you're an owner of Philips Hue lights, you can change the color of the lights, turn them on and off, so on and so forth. As you can tell, there are tons of actions built into Touch Portal. In this video, I want to show you how to create a button that will pause and play media on your computer. So in order to create this button, the first thing we need to do is create an action for toggling the play slash pause under the media function section. So we're gonna go ahead and create that. The next thing we need to create is an if statement, which is a logic statement within Touch Portal. So we're gonna go ahead and create this action for if state. And what we're gonna do is click on this if and drag it above the media function. In the drop down menu for the if, we're gonna go and select if this button state changes, so this button state is off, then we also need to create a logic statement for the else. So go ahead and create an else logic statement as well. What we're gonna do is copy this media button here and paste it down here. If it doesn't paste correctly, you can simply just drag it. Essentially what this else is going to do is separate the if statement. So we have an if statement that says if this button is on or off, it will do this function. When you place an else in here, it creates this same if statement 
right here except for instead of it being off it will be on so when this button is off it will toggle the play slash pause when this button is on it will toggle the play slash pause the next thing we need to do is create a change button state action go ahead and drag this up above the media there what we need to do is if the button is off we want to turn this button on Go ahead and copy this action and paste it under the else. And if this button is on, we want to turn this button off. Now we have successfully created a pause slash play button in touch portal. Now, if you didn't want any button visual changes, all you would need to have is this toggle play slash pause. But if you want the button visuals to actually change when you press the button, it requires a bit more stuff. The next thing we need to do is actually create the action to change the button visuals. So what we're gonna do is go over to our visuals on the left and create a change button visuals action. What you'll notice in this window is you have all the button settings on the right and you have boxes that you can toggle on the left. The way this works is if you want to change the background color of this button when you press it, you need to make sure you toggle that change. What we're going to do is change this from on and off. I'm simply going to change the title from off. So I'm going to add that button visual change and I'm going to make sure that it's in the off section. I'm going to copy this and paste it up here. And what we're going to do is make sure this is on. Now we have successfully created the visual changes with the button as well. The last thing to do is to create the default state of the button. The default state of the button can be found in the button settings on the right. What you'll notice is if you scroll all the way down, the initial state of this button is off. You can change it from on or off. You're gonna want it off because most likely when you open Touch Portal, you're not gonna have music playing right away. So what we're gonna do is make sure this button visual here, the defaulted one, matches the same visuals for the off of the button. So we're gonna go ahead and make the text off and we're going to save this button. Now, if you hit refresh on your device, you will notice a new button on your touch portal device. This is my device here. If you take a look, we have our new button on the device here. And when I press it, if you look above me, you'll notice that the media on my computer starts playing. You'll also notice that the button goes from off to on. If I press it again, it will pause the media and the button will go to off. That is how you create an on and off switch or a button visual change within Touch Portal. You can apply the same exact logic with the actual icons of pause and play, and it will change the button visuals to either playing or paused. It's a pretty awesome function to have, and it's a pretty awesome button to create for all you beginners out there. That actually completes this tutorial. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you did learn something from this video, do me a solid, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on future Touch Portal guides. Like I said before, if you do have any questions after watching this video, feel free to hop in my Discord server and ask your questions in the support section of that server. Another great resource is the Touch Portal Discord server, so go ahead and check those guys out as well. They're pretty awesome and they're pretty helpful. If you're also just looking for a cool group to hang out with, feel free to hop in my Discord server and hang out in the chat rooms and just chat with other like-minded individuals. Thank you guys so much for watching again, and I will catch you in my next video. Peace.